Excuse me? Yeah, hey. Sorry, hi. How you doing? You good? Cool. Th that's great. I was, um... Can I ask you something? I mean, like, quick. W would that be alright? <sighs> Thanks. I'm, um... Well, you probably couldn't tell or anything, but I'm new here. Uh, just visiting the city for a couple... Whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm just, uh, I came into that, what's it called? The Port Authority place there. And I've been walking along, you know, heading downtown for, uh, I need to get myself downtown. I am headed south, right? I mean, this is, you can totally get yourself mixed up around here. I mean, like, completely. I was too for about 30 minutes when I first got in. I asked somebody which way to go. Oh, but now that I think about it, it was this kid. You know, with the jersey thing on and his hat all to one side. He was probably just messing with me. I bet that was it. Anyhow, he pointed, and so I took off in that direction. But pretty soon, I'm looking at the streets as I'm passing them, and I'm like, hey... Why are the numbers going up all the time? Because I did look at a map before I got here. This lady on the bus had one of those fold out jobbies in a little packet. They're pretty cool. And I had it out with her and we were studying the thing. Her daughter had a baby and she's going to Queens. Or, or something like that. Uh, to see her. Both of them. Uh, the mother and the baby, I'm saying both. Uh, so we figured out the Queens thing and I checked out the whole layout of Manhattan too. Because that's where I'm headed. Manhattan. Sorry, I got off the point there. I'll shut up soon, I promise. <laughs> anyway, this kid sends me uptown, and the point I was trying to make before was that I should have known better because I already scouted it out on her thingy there. I noticed that the streets go up in numbers as you go north. I knew that, so it was just stupid of me to do what he said. Well... That's what you get, though, by trusting a person you don't even know. And some kid at that. I mean, he's a teenager, right? And teens can be kind of shitty that way. Do things just to bug you or piss you off like that. Yeah. So, there I am, walking and walking and walking, and suddenly, like some guy down at the power company flipped a breaker on in my head, I look up at one of those signs, maybe around... 60th street or somewhere and I say I mean literally like out loud oh shit just like that oh shit I'm not a guy who swears all the time like not like my old man was not at all but God, it's warm out you know and and I mean feel it it's sticky right and I figure now I need to turn back around and walk downtown, so that stinks. <laughs> it really does. See, I'm trying not to spend too much money or anything. Conserve what I got, so I'm not going to take any cab rides or, or that kind of deal. The subway or whatever. I was just planning on walking. I read this little booklet down at our public library before I left, and New York was described as a walking city. It was. So, that's how I got back here. To where I am now. Here with you. 14th Street? Or whatever. What do they call this? Union Station or something? Square. Union Square, is that it? Yeah, Square. It's nice. Pretty. And hey! Look over there! A Starbucks! What a surprise! <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> well, that, that's probably an old joke here. Uh, but we've even got one in our town now. I think there might even be two. Maybe one down at the new mall they just put in. I haven't been there yet, but I've heard there was one in the food court. It, it's not like the regular mall or anything. You have to drive over to the Coeur d'Alene for that, but it's... One of those outlet jobbies, you know, with the big Ralph Lauren stores and, and Tommy Hilfiger and, and that sort of stuff. And parking shopping? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> sorry. God, I, I'm going on like a schoolgirl here. I am sorry. Forgive me. Jesus. 
It's just, you know, it's nice to actually talk to someone here. Been walking for a couple hours now and surrounded by people. I mean, an ocean of people everywhere you look. But not a word being spoken, not really. Just this, this constant hum. This sound all around, cars and machines and, and horns and, and those sirens, those things are like, holy hell, that is the loudest noise I've ever heard. But I haven't exchanged not two words of conversation with anybody here since I got here. And then I saw you sitting there, just hunched up on your blanket, and I figured, what the hell, he's not going anywhere fast, I'll ask him. <laughs> And that's what brought me over here anyway. Uh, no offense. So, look, just point me toward, um, let me see. I got a piece of this, an address here from my wife. 221 Avenue A, number three. See, that's what was throwing me off before. I was walking around for a while once I got down this far, and I'm like, what the hell? Avenue A. What kind of name is that? I I'm never going to find it. That's why I came over and asked. Because that's the way I was raised. Uh, my mother was a sort of no-nonsense, but very kind lady who just got shit done, you know? Got to it and got it done. She'd wash my mouth out with soap, probably saying shit as much as I do. <laughs> and she totally would too, I promise you. <laughs> uh oh. But other than that, she was a terrific person. It's not that bad, though, really, is it? Saying that, it, it just means, well, you know, poop or whatever. So who cares? I mean, really, we get so used to saying things or hearing them that they lose meaning. But a word like shit or some other ones that people think are curse words or swearing, they don't really bug me at all. Nah, they don't. Not like they do my wife, man. Oh, she hates that shit. Oh, see? Sorry. It's just a habit. Anyhow, she gets so mad when I swear. She comes from a very, very strict family. Montana Methodist. Oh, which might be the tightest ass people that God has ever created. And she gets all angry and crying and whatnot if I use any bad language at all. Even though she's like the black sheep of the family. So that's what people would probably consider her. The wild one of the bunch. <laughs> she still hates it when you swear. <laughs> you know, people... People are funny, aren't they? So complex and interesting when you really think about it. She left me. My wife did. Cecily's her name. That's her given name, Cecily. Which is kind of beautiful, I guess. But I always just called her Cece, which makes her smile. <laughs> Used to, anyway. And I like it. Cece. That doesn't really matter to you, though, I suppose. Not to anybody who sleeps on a piece of cardboard, probably, but... Well, I just thought I'd give you a little background on us. Some... Uh, whatchamacallit... Uh, context. Yeah. That's it. Context. The context is CC took off on me. All that upbringing be damned. Left me after six years of marriage and two kids at home. She moved away and wrote me a letter about three weeks ago. Said she hated me. You believe that? Used that very word, hate. And says she's never coming back. Don't bother looking for her or contacting her or, or nothing. She's done too much for people in her life and has bottled up her, her passions or, 
or some nonsense like that. Women come up with some crazy stuff when they're angry or sad, don't they? I mean, passions. Please. And and that she's she she loves the children, but she can't go on living a lie or 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 something like that. Look, I've got it here with me. Not that you'd care to read it, but look, I am carrying it with me. And you know what did it? Seriously, what what set all this shit into motion? Huh? Jane Fonda. Hmm. Yeah. N not like the exercise tapes or anything like that, no. But a movie she saw on the TV. Yeah. Some older film that Miss Fonda did a while back, which I didn't even recognize. I was sitting right there, too, on the couch and half listening. But I was tired and, and we just had dinner, some Boston Market, so I was stuffed. And I noticed that she's staring at the television, Cece is, and, and really into it. Leaning forward like she does sometimes when the view's on or that Regis Philbin show. You know, involved. But it's getting late, and I really want to put on ESPN, check some of today's hockey highlights. But before I do, like the second before I click over on the remote, I glance at her, and she gives me one of her looks. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? One of those married looks that says, don't, don't do, do it. it. If I want dinner tomorrow, and clean socks, and, and shit... Do, Do not, not touch, touch that, that button. button. So I watch a little more. It was all snowy, and I didn't even recognize any of the other actors, but eventually I give her a kiss on the head and wander off to bed. I figured what the hell, let her watch the damn thing. Point being, she left me right after that. Cece did. Maybe only a month later, when I was at work one day. Kids are off at school. She packed it in and took off. For here, in New York City. Not that I ever would have known that, you know, where she lives or anything, but that letter I mentioned, the one I just showed you, yeah, not only does it have the postmark on it, but she writes her damn address up in the corner like she was taught to do from the first day of kindergarten on. <laughs> How about that one? <laughs> Jesus, you know, she makes me laugh sometimes. How, like, ordinary she is for somebody who really thinks she's something special <laughs> that note was the first contact we've had Cece and me since she took off like six months ago I mean other than her lawyer oh d did I mention that before all the lawyer business <sighs> that's a whole nother oh believe me you don't want me going off about that shit it's it's Forget it. Basically, I'm paying for her little adventure. That's how that all worked out. I'm the money guy on her I need to find myself bullshit. But I don't hear a word of this from the woman herself. Oh no! I get some lawyer dude telling me all this like he knows her so much better than me. Cecily has requested, and, and Cecily will require... I mean, come on! So you can imagine that when I get this letter from her, I'm more than a little surprised. Both surprised and delighted. And that's why I'm here. To see if we can... You know... Whatever. Thought I'd drop in on her and see what we can figure out. Cece and me. <sighs> well, I see you got your eyes on my Burger King bag there. <laughs> Probably haven't heard a word I've said, right? <laughs> well, hate to break it to you, pal, but there's nothing in it. I mean, fries or anything like that. Half a whaler or, or, or whatnot. Uh huh. Actually, I got a gun in here. Yeah. 
My old man's 357, a real beauty from the 60s. He left it to me when he died. Some kind of cancer took him a few years back, and he left me this. This and one of his cars. My brother got the Corvette, which sucked. And a few hundred bucks. So, I got that letter from Cece telling me she's found a new life for herself and that she's escaped and has now liberated herself from the slavery of, of marriage and some other Jane Fonda inspired crap. I took a few days off from work, left the kids with my sister, and took the bus out here. Jumped on a Greyhound and made it in a couple days. And well, hey, you know the rest. Except for my running with that kid, I've been enjoying myself just fine. Seeing the sights, taking my time, just walking. And in a minute or two, once I get my bearings down here, it's like being in the Grand Canyon or something. How'd I imagine it? At least never been and trying to get back up to the rim by supper time. Or maybe not. <laughs> Shit. Shit, I'm just rambling now. Sorry. Uh, forget it. <laughs> but I will find that address. I will. This A Street or wherever she's living now, old Cece. And I'm going to go, and I'm going to knock on her door. Knock, knock. And when she opens it, I'm going to walk up to her, and I'm going to put the barrel of this revolver right down her throat. I am. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to smile at her. Yeah. Smile down at her, and lean in real close, all up in her face, and whisper... Was it worth it, Cece? Finding yourself like that, because I'm curious. I am. I really want to know if it was. Right before I blow her fucking head off. And then I'm off to the terminal. I got a 9.15 leaving here tonight and back to work on Monday. Oh yeah, I need to mess up her place a little bit too. Make sure it looks like some local punks broke in there. See, I got it all worked out. The whole business. Came up with that ransacking the place thing in Ohio or, or somewhere. It's a good idea, right? <laughs> I'm... Just yanking your chain, buddy. Seriously, damn. I thought you New Yorkers were so quick and clever or whatever. Jesus, look at you. With your mouth all hanging open there. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't give a shit what Cece does. Oh, we're better off without her. Just thought I'd drop in on her on my vacation. Say hello. Figure out some legal stuff. Hey, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, right, so, so I'm out of here. Need to get on the road, all right? It was nice chatting with you. And uh, which way am I going again? To Avenue A? That way? Okay. I'm trusting you now. Don't pull that shit on me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's cool. Hey, here. Oh, oh no way. Can't give you that. <laughs> Kidding. There. Knock yourself out. Have a feast on me. I'll see you around. What? What's that shit people always say to each other, you know, like in the movies all the time? Although you never hear it in real life. You know, um... Oh yeah, I got it. Hey man. Have a nice day. <laughs>